Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. My name is Miss Robinson. This is Genesis. She's tired, but we're here today with another math tutorial video for you guys. So today we're looking at lesson 4.3 and lesson 4.3 talks about properties and multiplication. And the essential question is, how can you use properties to multiply a decimal and a whole number? So in today's lesson, we're gonna be looking at two different strategies you could use when you're multiplying a decimal with the whole number. And both strategies should be a little familiar with you or familiar to you. The first strategy that we're gonna look at is how to multiply a decimal by a whole number using the distributive property. That was the whole weightlifting um, metaphor that we used in class not too long ago. And the second strategy is we're gonna be multiplying a decimal by a whole number using partial quotients. So I'm gonna give you a couple of examples and then I'm going to come back with some closing thoughts. Um, I just wanted to include Genesis today because she was really wanting to be on camera. So here she is, everybody say hi to Genesis. She's ready to get down now. So I will flip the camera around and I will see you in just a second. Bye. Okay, so today we are going to be multiplying a decimal by a whole number. So we're gonna multiply five times two and five tenths. And today we're gonna to be looking at two strategies. We're gonna be looking at the distributive property and then we're also gonna be looking at partial products. So if you remember, when we first talked about the distributive property, as I wait for the camera to come back and focus, there it is. We've talked about the distributive property before and I've kind of explained it as pretend like you're going to the gym and you're working out and you're lifting weights and you pick up a really heavy weight. You would never try and pick up that heavy weight with just one arm. You always use both your arms because it makes the work a little bit easier for you. So that's the way I like to think of the distributive property of math. I'm taking a number that is difficult for some reason, maybe it's really large, or maybe in this case, it's a little bit challenging because it's a decimal, and I'm gonna break it up into two easier parts to manage, or two easier chunks to work with. So when we're dealing with the distributive property, the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna take each of your factors, and remember, factors are the numbers that are being multiplied, so five is a factor, and two and five tenths is a factor, and you wanna break your factors down into their place value positions. And in this particular example, we're gonna be just breaking down two and five tenths because five is just a whole number and it's all by itself. Now, I don't know why my camera keeps going in. There we go. So I'm going to rewrite five times two and five tenths using the distributive property. So I know there's going to be two arms that I'm going to be using because I'm trying to make this problem a little bit easier. So I'm gonna put a set there of parentheses and a set of parentheses there. I know I'm going to be adding. I know that two things are going to be in here, two things are gonna be in there, and they're gonna be multiplied together. So that should look familiar to you guys. In this case, five is the lifter. Five is the weight lifter or five is the worker. So I'm gonna put a five there and I'll put my five there. You're gonna put your whole number in each set of parentheses because that is the number that you're gonna be multiplying the two chunks of your decimal by. Then I'm gonna be looking at two and five tenths. I'm gonna break this down to its place value positions. So I know that in two and five tenths, I have two holes. So I'm gonna put my two holes in that set of parentheses. And then I have five tenths. So I'm gonna put my five tenths in that parenthesis. And then I'm gonna multiply. Now what should happen is some of this, if not all of it, should then turn into a mental math problem. We all know that five times two is 10. I'm gonna put my plus sign here. And over here, I'm multiplying five times five tenths. And I'm gonna, for a brief second, think of this as five times five because I know a basic fact there. I know that five times five is 25, and if I just go back to, my, to the fact that this is a tenth, that means that five times five tenths is going to give me 25 tenths. So I'm gonna write it like that first. And if I'm thinking about regrouping, I know that I cannot have 25 tenths, and I know that there's 10 tenths in one whole. That means if I have 20 tenths, that's gonna give me two holes. So if I have 25 tenths, based on what I've learned in previous chapters, I should know that 25 tenths would be regrouped as two holes 
and five tenths. So five times five tenths equals 25 tenths and 25 tenths is regrouped as two and five tenths. Now all that's left is I need to add these two values from my two sets of parentheses. That should be pretty easy. 10 plus 2.5 sorry, <laughs> 10 plus 2.5 is equal to 12 and 5 tenths. And that would be the answer to, or the product I should say, of 5 times 2 and 5 tenths. So when you're dealing with the uh, distributive property, just to get yourself started, start by putting down your two sets of parentheses, start by putting the plus sign in the middle to remind yourself you're gonna be adding the values from both sets of parentheses. Know that the whole number is going to go into both sets and it will be your first factor in both sets. And then you're gonna break your decimal point down into its place value position. So I had two holes, which I put there, and then five tenths, which I put there. And then when I multiply the five times the five tenths, I just thought of the five tenths as a whole number for a brief second so that I knew it was 25 and then reminded myself that I'm dealing with 25 tenths and then I can't have 25 tenths so I regrouped that as two holes and five tenths. I took my two values from my two sets of parentheses, 10 plus two and five tenths, added those together and I got an answer or a product of 12 and five tenths. So that is how you would use the distributive property on this particular or in this particular type of problem where you're multiplying a whole number times a decimal. I'm gonna be back in a second and we're gonna talk about how to do the same problem, but this time using partial quotients. Okay, now we have the same problem, two and five tenths times five, and now we're gonna talk about using partial products in order to find the product. The first thing I wanna make sure I make very, very clear is some of you will be tempted to see this decimal point and just bring it down. That is not what we're doing when we're multiplying a decimal by a whole number, so never, never, never do that. So when we're using partial products, we're gonna use this number, the number that it's being multiplied by, and we're gonna multiply by each place value position separately. And then we're gonna add those two partial products. So first, I wanna take five, and I wanna multiply it by the hundredths place only. So I'm gonna do five times five tenths. And we just discussed in the last example that when I'm looking at five times five tenths, I'm gonna allow myself to really think of that as just five times five so that I can just get my basic fact out there. I know that five times five is 25. And then going back to reminding myself, but I'm dealing with tenths, so it's not just gonna be 25, but it's gonna be 25 tenths. My rules of regrouping say that I cannot have more than nine of any type of piece. And once I get past that nine mark, I need to make groups of 10 and regroup my tenths into holes. So in 25 tenths, I have two groups of 10, which means I'm going to regroup those into two holes, which is two. And then I have my five tenths left over, which I represent that way. And that tells me that five times five tenths is two and five tenths. And I'm gonna label that as a partial product because I know I'm going to be needing that in just a little bit. Then I'm gonna take my five and I'm gonna multiply it by my whole number, which is two. And if you really think about it, partial products and the distributive property are really doing the same thing. It's just set up in a different way. So I'm doing the exact same thing in this strategy as I did with the distributive property. So I'm gonna take five times two because now I'm multiplying it by the ones place. And that's easy because that's a basic fact. I know that five times two is 10 and I'm gonna label that as a partial product. So now I have these two partial products and I need to add them. 10 plus 2.5, or just to show it to you a different way, if you wanna add it vertically, you would do 10 plus 2.5. We've learned in the previous chapter that if I want my mind to be at ease and add a decimal to 10, I would just create an equivalent decimal by putting a zero there just so that it looks the same as this one. And then I can go ahead and add zero plus five is five. Zero plus two is two. 
one plus nothing is one, and then I'm gonna bring down my decimal point. And you'll see I get the same answer there as I did when I used the distributive property. Now, luckily for you guys tonight, you have a little bit of freedom on your homework. You're gonna be multiplying a decimal by a whole number, and you are allowed to choose whichever of these two strategies is the most comfortable for you, the one that you like the best, the one that you have the most success with. So when it tells you to find the product, it's not gonna say find the product using the distributive property. It's not gonna say find the product using partial products because that's up to you. Just make sure that you have work to show and that it's clear to me what strategy you're using. Also remember, you can never just bring down your decimal point. That's not appropriate to do in this lesson. So those are my two examples. I'm gonna come back to you with my closing thoughts. Okay, so I hope those examples were helpful to you. So for your homework, when you're doing tonight's homework for this lesson, you really can choose which of those two strategies that you would like to use. The directions of your homework don't explicitly tell you use this one, use that one. So you're able to pick between the two and whichever strategy makes more sense to you or whichever one you feel like you would be the most successful with, that's going to be the one that you want to use with your homework tonight doesn't really matter to me. All that matters is that you understand how to use it and you feel successful with it. So with that being said, that's all I have to say for this particular video. I hope you guys have a great evening or a great day or whatever you're doing right now. And as always, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If it was, give it a thumbs up and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye. <music>